I want to draw <coughs> attention to a very simple doctrine. Again, these are things we are generally aware of, but there are also things we tend to take for granted. And um, as a result, it affects the way we think, the way we talk, the how the, the outcomes that we get from our lives. Life is already tough enough the way it is. You know, um, even when you are doing all the right things and you are doing them right, there are still no guarantees that everything will work out right. On ex except, you know, that eventually you know God will show up. And that's true. But often, you know, sometimes we, 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 we make mistakes, stupid mistakes that tend to delay or postpone what God wants to do in our lives. Let me give an example. For example, uh, Abraham was 75 years old when he was called. He was 86 when Ishmael was born. This is Genesis chapter 16. I didn't know this until recently. I didn't notice it until recently. It ended, chapter 6 ended by saying Abraham was 86 years old. And then chapter 17 starts by saying when Abraham was 99 years old, God spoke to him. And the indication, the suggestion, what becomes apparent is that from the time Ishmael was born till the next time Abraham heard from God was 13 years. He had made a mistake and that mistake cost him more years. Another example is um, Moses. God did promise Abraham that Israel would be in Egypt for 400 years, serving them. Moses was about 40 years old when he took matters into his own hands and he killed the Egyptian. Shortly after that, he went into the wilderness and was cooked for another 40 years before he heard God and then went back to do what God asked him to do. Eventually, when Israel came out of Egypt, the Bible says they had been there for 430 years. Was God lying? Certainly not. But clearly, there was a mistake in there somewhere. It would seem, it would seem, I'm supposing now, that Moses taking the matter into his own hands and acting outside of what God intended caused it for Israel to end up spending more time in Egypt than God proposed for them. Now, I'm asking you now, are you standing on God's promises, yet putting one foot outside of it? A lot of us live that kind of life, okay? Some of us who are awaiting a miracle, you are waiting for, a, you have been married 10 years and the baby has not come, and you have waited and waited and waited, and you decide that today you feel like doing something else, so you go outside of your marriage and you get, and you have a baby. That was not God. God still loves you. His promise to you is still valid. But you may have delayed the outcome. You may have delayed the outcome. Like I just described with Moses, with Abraham. You know, um, sometimes prayer just doesn't help. Sometimes prophecies are delayed. Many of us know this passage in... Um, numbers where Balak, Balaam was called to curse Israel and he experienced a lot of trouble trying to even get to the place where he was supposed to curse Israel and there's a lot of story there but I'll just dwell on the words that came out of his mouth when he was about to curse Israel uh, I'm opened here to numbers chapter 23 and I'm going to read two verses far apart because you are going to have to read um, everything from 22 to 25 to 24 in order to get the full context of the story okay yep you're gonna to have to read everything from 22 to 24 and um, well I'm not going to keep your attention that long so 
I'm reading Numbers 23 and I'm reading essentially verses 8 and verses and verse, verses 8 and 23. Walk with me here. So Balaam opens his mouth and says, How can I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defiled? Basically, as a child of God, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. The enemy cannot touch you. So, I have a problem with all of us, so many of us, who waste our time fighting battles that God has overcome already. I have a problem with that. You are fighting with the wizard from your father's house or the marine from your mother's village. The woman that is sitting under a tree frying a kara, who does not even know your name and has never heard about you. You are sending arrows and discomfiture upon them. Meanwhile, if God has not cursed you, you cannot be cursed. The Bible says, there is now therefore no condemnation. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who are called according to his purpose. Yep, I, I didn't quote it right. Are you getting my point? My point is this. You, nobody can touch you. So why are you fighting a battle that God has won already? I'm moving to verse 23. Numbers 23, 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, indicating the child of God context. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what had God wrought? In other words, look what God has done. Listen, Jesus has already died for you. You are already saved. There is no condemnation. The enemy brings accusations against you, but he cannot touch you without God's permission. So if something is happening in your life, you want to go and ask Baba, why is this happening and what am I supposed to do about it? That's simple. However, moving forward to the more intricate, the more important one. We go to, the, to two chapters later. These same people that could not be cursed were suddenly in problems. Why? And this is the crux of this of this uh, video. I will try to keep it as short and straight to the point as possible. I read verse twenty five, chapter twenty five now, Numbers chapter twenty five. Says, and Israel abode in Shittim, the same place where they had been cursed. They had, somebody tried to curse them and could not curse them. Okay, and the people began to commit whoredom, whoredoms with the daughters of Moab, and they called the people unto their, the sacrifices of their gods. That is, the Moabites called the Israelites to the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Balpeor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. Short, long story short, snakes came into the midst of the camp and started killing them. God himself was dealing with them. What am I trying to say? The enemy could not curse you. But you now began to allow things into your life that are not supposed to be in your life. I keep trying to, I keep saying this. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. Stop thinking, talking, and acting like the world around you. The rules by which you operate, they are the rules of heaven. So stop regurgitating the lingo, the language of the world around you. Stop, stop imbibing the practices because they say, okay, everybody does it. You too, you are doing it. You too, you are saying it. Stop, stop echoing what the enemy is doing and saying and start representing the kingdom of god that you represent then you are inside god's hedge and you cannot be cursed there is no enchantment there is no divination against you there is no condemnation against you because you are where god asked you to be doing what god asked you to do but not being unequally yoked with unbelievers not being unequally yoked with people that you're not supposed to mix with. You must relate with them one way or the other because you are in this world. But you are not of this world. The rules by which you operate are the rules of the kingdom of heaven. Operate by those rules. Live a holy life. You know, be at peace with all, you know, pursue peace with all men and holiness. Without which no man shall see God. Where is that holiness? It is lacking in this generation. And God is about to pour out His Spirit in a big and mighty way. We know it. If you are sensitive to the Spirit, you can see it. Something about this year 2020, it's just different. And it does not get easier going forward. But it gets better. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit within you. Live by that Holy Spirit. Stop echoing what the world is echoing. Understand what the Spirit is doing and act according to that. I'm going to stop there. Keep the video short. 
If there are questions, ask in the comment section. Um, click on like, click on subscribe, click on notifications so that you can get another video when it comes in. Most importantly, share this video. Somebody may need to hear these words. At this time, it may be needful for them. Probably is needful for you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.